What's up, YouTube? I just thought I'd do differences of uh, spacers from Smolik Performance. Uh, does this one say it? No, this one actually does not say Smolik Performance. I guess it's newer spacers do. But this is a, for a 40 millimeter spacer. You can see it has a cut for the transverse ports to match. And then a grind for the intake. That's why I was this one. And then you can see his uh, 40 millimeter short rod doesn't have a machine finish just like these have the nice bullet aluminum. This is more rough cut. I don't know if it's die cast or not, but it is what it is. Uh, basically, I'm going to show you what I'm going to do. Uh, you can see this is a regular motor. And... We'll take off the piston. Give me a sec. Basically, you can see it. I'm going to put it on here. The spacer lines up perfect. And has perfect uh, size of these transfers. Basically the same size. But I'm going to show you what I'm going to do. Because Smolik does not provide it as uh, all, the other kicks, all the other kits do. You can see. They have them all cut out like that. Uh, I'm basically going to have to do this work onto this spacer. I know there's not enough material, he could say, to do such a thing. But look at this one. You see the black stuff, how thick that black right here is. Compared to this one, has more meat. And this one has very little meat. But I'm going to have to do like that to this. And I'm going to show you what I'm going to do. Basically... I'm gonna replicate flipping it from this way, not the big open transfer parts, just this part. And I'm gonna flip it, make sure your intake side is there. Flip it, line up the holes, and you can see you could trace this with the Sharpie. And then you could flip it, and once you're done tracing this big shape here, basically cutting out all this and all this, once you cut out all that, now you could get your one of your base gasket, gaskets, make sure it's the intake side, put it on there. So now the hole's already big enough basically like this here you can see and then I'm gonna sharpie this to get me a finish like this here you can see and basically you kinda need it because the actual cylinder we're holding it the wrong way. The actual cylinder, you can see how big the transfers openings are. Once you play it on here, you can see how the transfers are basically open up all the way. So it's going to restrict the flow. If you just put this, you're already, op you're already getting enough transfer opening through those. So I'm pretty sure just by machining this onto that, like this here, it'll be good. And then after that, I could basically kind of do this with whatever material I have left by sharpening this on here and going in an angle, like a 45 degree angle as well as the intake area so that should be pretty good uh, I'm gonna have to do that because I am playing with a short rod uh, 40 millimeter stroke sorry for the long video but I kind of wanted to get my point across uh, saying that if you do go with a short rod you're getting this it's not a pretty as pretty as these other spacers and he still need to do work. He might comment or say anything saying uh, you don't have to. But 
just from seeing this, you could kind of already see. I'm pretty sure it's going to help just by opening it up this much without even putting this extra bin here. Just by opening it this much more, uh, you should have better flow. And then on top of it, it being able to have flow, you know, basically go through. And then this angle here, I'll go with a 45 and an angle. And then I should be pretty good. So, uh, give me a couple days. I'll show you what I did to it. It'll probably be a follow-up video explaining what I'm going to do. And then uh, I'll do it. And then we'll slam it all together. Uh, I do don't want... I might uh, do like what I was saying. But I might not open them up as big as this spacer is here. I might open it up just a little bit. Just enough to get a little bit more flow. And then uh, I'll also do this and then make sure I get like enough uh, angle for I can give enough angle for it to go I know it's very minimum material I have very little bit of material to do that but I'm gonna attempt to do it and you'll be on you'll be in the journey seeing me doing it you can see how the intake is closing up all that And the nice thing about these, it's, it's all about the transfers and port timing. That gives you all the speed that this reed cylinder setup gives you. Plus how big the exhaust is for more flow to go out. And then the way it sucks up all that air. It's a pretty cool setup. Minerali cylinders are fun to ride. Uh, I'm also going to show you how to get rid of uh, C's. Basically, my engines were seizing up after like 54-ish. It would just shut off. It would just end. And it ruined the fun for me. For a long time, I'm just like, well, I guess I got to go under 50 and cruise, you know. And But then I started playing with uh, a Makuni carburetor. I was able to go top speed. Technically, top speed. And not freeze up, but I wasn't going as fast as my other carburetor setup. But my other carburetor setup was making it seize. But I felt like the other carburetor, the clone Makuni carb from eBay for about thirty some dollars, I I would be able to get more speed out of it. So I'm gonna go back with the clone carburetor for this setup, and I'm gonna go with the Makuni on the Athena racing cylinder that's going to get the nice carburetor this one's going to get the china carburetor with the italian low budget cylinder and then uh we'll compare the two and say which is faster uh basically i'm building this just for it to be a runner this is going to be basically a runner this one here is going to have a 40 millimeter long rod basically it's going to have one of these big spacers probably the bigger one this one so it's probably gonna have this spacer for that cylinder which cylinder it is it's the Athena like I said with the mushroom opening intake in the bottom basically I'm gonna have to set it up pretty close to that you can see I could open up this a little bit more just a little bit uh, I'm not gonna go crazy and then like I said uh, basically opening up the inside when I say inside I mean this part compared to this one but you can barely see it's like a, a square in in here well this one has the bigger opening I could put my finger in here well this one I guess I could put my finger but it's less room and if I would had known 
the Athena cylinder was like that, I would have never done nothing to this cylinder. And I would have just replicated all this port work, factory port work, onto this cylinder to have the benefit of being an Athena, basically cast iron. And just for the fun of, you know, knowing that they took their time to get this port timing and all this spec up to their standards. And you can see, I think the transfer time ports right here from the side, basically I'm talking about these, they seem pretty much identical. The only things it is not identical is like the room that you have in here. This one actually has more room, so more airflow. Like see, like only my, my tip of the finger, see where the finger now is at, it ends right there. While this one, I could put my whole finger now in there and go in. So this has bigger transfers. Hands down bigger transfers. But I did bore my uh, cast iron cylinder a little bit inside here. See this one actually goes in more compared to this one. This one pretty goes in. Uh, I actually bored it, the, the transfers out. So I was getting like a little bit rough idle. But then my carburetor started getting dirty. So that didn't help. Uh, I did messed up right here. The Athena doesn't have a big opening here. I already opened mine up pretty big here. But hopefully this doesn't mess up, affect anything that much. And if it does, oh well, I could always get one of these down the road, replicate this cylinder onto one of those. But it is what it is. I just thought I'll show you just because I was bored. And I just wanted to see if uh, different things. I was, I was just, I saw my engine and I'm like, let me just try, see what I could do. Maybe tomorrow I'll jump on it. Maybe the next day I'll jump on it. Oh, uh, we'll just find out when I jump on it. But right now I'm just, like I said, uh, I just wanted to check it out. So basically, trace that that side, flip it around trace that on that side this side I have to cut open it up and then this side whatever I cut I just have to blend that flow to that flow but you gotta understand that this has so much of a bigger opening if you open it up that much you're gonna have leakage you see how big the transfers are here maybe that's why Ethan doesn't do that but still like, look at this cylinder and this adapter plate. And basically, that's the same opening right here. Of course, this gasket's a little bigger because this is for a sports racing cylinder. But you get the idea of it being pretty darn close. And like I said, this is going to give me a rough eyeball. And I'm going to make it go a little bit smaller. So wherever the Sharpie line's at, I'm going to do it before the Sharpie line ends. I'm not going to go all the way back from the Sharpie line. And then same thing with this. I'm going to do it. And I'm not going to go match 100% all the way drumming, cutting all the way to that... Uh, to that sharpie line just because this is a different size rod and the material is a lot thinner you can see it's basically this is probably like two of these if you want to say so yeah but it just would have been nice if he would have poured a little bit you know uh, he has the fancy machine that could go all right go about one millimeter deep all right open up the cut all right well this one's smaller so let's not have as big of opening as these but I guess programming for him costs a million dollars I would think it would be pretty easy to program 
but anyway cool just wanted to share my short rod build because my short rod build is my first time building a short rod build and the short rod is going to be with the cast iron the real 40 millimeter long rod stroke is going to be the Athena that's going to be maybe my my uh, minerali uh, race bike and this is going to be for like my daily rider because these cast irons are pretty cool because this doesn't have no fancy nickel plating or chrome or whatever and if it does it does but because it is cast iron I could always um, bore it if it ever scratches the cylinder the cylinder has little lines but nothing like major scarring even with all the the seizes this motor got it never had any scarring so and then like I said I'm gonna fix the C's and I'm gonna give you just basically what I'm gonna do to fix the C's uh, if you have a C's problem you can see how clean it goes it has good honestly it doesn't it has good room like but I'm basically gonna bore the cylinder a little bit using one of the drill uh, boring tool like this video is boring but I'm gonna drill it with the boring tool I'm gonna bore it a little bit and then as well as the piston I'm gonna sand the piston a little bit and then the rings as well I'm just gonna sand the rings just slightly and uh, it should allow it so when the the motor expands it doesn't uh, right away uh, right away seizes up and who knows I might uh, rip off the design of the Athena that doesn't have a window piston it actually has a skirted piston you can see it's skirted I might see from the opening of the intake area where does the skirt ends and begins and I could probably just use a motorized bicycle piston, a stock one, and skirt the piston. So I could also use a different piston. I'm not saying this piston's no good. Honestly, I think this piston has uh, some good, some good life to it still, even with all its black gunk it, it has. But that just shows that this has life. But either way, I could always use a motorized bike piston, skirt that piston put it on here and then uh basically replicate an athena race cylinder on one of these uh i'll do a better video with better lighting and i'm not gonna have like measurements but i could probably say oh yeah it's about millimeter go a millimeter more wider go a millimeter two millimeters wider a little rough reference so if you see my videos you could be like okay Thanks a lot for the information. You gave me information just going one millimeter across here and here with my China cast iron cylinder. This one's not China. Like I said, this one's from Italy, but it's not a good high quality one. Even though your people will say, oh, it's still China. The box said Italy, but uh, I seen people got the new Raku cylinder. And the new Raku cylinder is actually looks uglier than this. Like the exhaust circle is not as nice as this. Mine, I look, I drill, I, uh, I dremeled this to have a nicer rounded exhaust to match my exhaust flange. And then I also uh, widened the exhaust. It's hard to see here, but I actually widened the exhaust. But the Athena is actually wider. But you also got to remember when you're widening it, uh, not to go too wide and hit your stud hole. Your stud hole's there, and it's hard to see, but see a stud hole's here, the hole ends there, and then you're there. So if you go a little bit more wider, you could get a chance to uh, going through here. So you got to watch out. You got to be careful. Uh, same thing with my Athena. Once I bore out my holes, am I going to open up a transfer? I don't need that to happen. So I might 
if I feel like the risk is there, I might go with the, I might go with the, like a heli coil. Basically, they put a heli coil here to a six millimeter, so eight millimeter down to a six millimeter. I used heli coils before; they never had issues with me. I never had issues with it, so I might go with heli coils. So it'll be eight millimeter down to six millimeter, so I could not drill holes on my cylinder because it is a higher end quality style cylinder it was not cheap for me so I might just do that and I think it should be just as good but yeah you could go a million different ways this one's already bored out I actually did this one with a drill by hand and I actually did it on the floor I used my foot side to side to hold it and I was just drilling it and I was going a little slow and then a little fast a little slow a little fast I even sprayed some WD-40 but that WD-40 just seemed like it was gunking up everything and then I used oil same thing it seemed like it was gunking up everything so I just cleaned the drill bit and then I just drilled it dry and I just drilled it dry after a certain bit I pulled it out blew it took off all the dust and I kept on going with the WD-40 and the grease it just kept the gunk kept on building up on the tip and it was doling the drill tip with all the material basically it was like going down with the material so it's eating up the the sharp edge so to me it was just easier just drilling it and then just paying attention about all the shavings and then pull it out and blow the shavings and uh it's good when you're drilling these out is when the cylinder is brand new for no oil debris and none of that stuff gunks up same thing with like porting and doing all your stuff basically i'm gonna have to wash it i'm gonna use uh dawn dish soap i'm gonna dish soap it use the water hose or pressure washer then i'm gonna clean it up dry it and then do all the dremel work what i said i was gonna do basically just open up this one here more wider and uh the exhaust maybe a little bit more wider and yeah, I think that's about it for this cylinder here. If I had a fresh one, I would perfectly match this one. And like I said, on this one, I might even change the piston and skirt it like I was talking about. So if you're hearing the whole video, thanks a lot uh, for, for being a subscriber. Thanks a lot. Uh, I don't want to end it in a note, but a lot of people fast forward videos. I do sometimes too. That's totally fine. That's cool, man. But keep on watching my videos. And if you watch them full length, I appreciate it. And I'll soon do giveaways. So whoever probably skipped down to this part of the video, yes, I will be doing some giveaways. Like, I don't know, uh, maybe a giveaway as a, a free uh, super clutch fakey. A fake super clutch basically a three spring clutch i could probably send this out to you with the plate and everything and some brand new clutch pads if uh we, i get enough people tuning in my videos and watching my videos i might do a promotion saying something like i'm gonna say uh i don't know i'll, I'll come up with something and just participate, you know. I just want people watch fully watch my videos and appreciate the stuff I do. I know a lot of people do, but I might give away that or a carburetor or something, you know. Just just for you guys to be like, all right, cool, you know. Uh, all right. Thanks a lot.